Welcome to Myrtle Beach Eats and Beyond, the show where a local foodie, that's me, attempts to parlay a passion for delicious eats into a useful video guide for other locals and tourists attempting to answer the age-old question, where should we eat in Myrtle Beach? Don't worry, I've got you covered. With me on this journey are my three progeny, that's them, who also love to experience new eating emporiums, raising them up right. We'll also be exploring fun, family-friendly activities and showing you the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts, the lowdowns and hoedowns of where to shop, play, stop, and stay. If you're lucky, I might even cook for you. And if that's not enough to convince you to subscribe, just know that once a week, I am completely wrecking my diet to bring you this content. Now, I'm not saying that you should feel guilty about that in any way, but I'm just saying you should subscribe. Hey friends, come along with us and check out U.S. Foods Chef Store on this episode of Myrtle Beach Eats and Beyond. I have a bit of a love affair with this store, and it all started with cheese. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. I have a passion for cheese, particularly cheddar, mozzarella, provolone, manchego, goat cheese, feta, roquefort. Well, okay, it's seldom I meet a cheese I don't like. What can I say? But a while back, I was struggling to get a perfectly tasty, chewy, stretchy, melty mozzarella, and it was beginning to preoccupy my every thought. Why was cheese so melty and good when I got a cheesy pizza pie or mac and cheese at a restaurant, but at home, my melty cheese just didn't seem quite so melty? Was it my oven? Or was it my ordinary grocery store cheese? The only way to find out for certain would be to conduct some proper experiments, which meant I would have to somehow procure some restaurant cheese, right? So then, my mind became preoccupied with finding a restaurant supply store where I could, in fact, obtain this cheese. I had seen trucks delivering to restaurants from U.S. Foods, and I kept meaning to look them up to see if I could somehow order with them, but before I had made good on my internet sleuthing, I was driving my way around Myrtle Beach, getting to know our new surroundings, when lo and behold, like a beacon in my cheesy darkness, a billboard appeared advertising U.S. Foods Chef Store, open to the public. I was so stoked to see if they carried cheese, but to be frank, it still took me quite a while to get the four of us there. One day, I was deeply in a mood. A mood that incorporated an intense desire to go to a shopping club and buy something edible in a ridiculously large quantity. I considered Costco and Sam's Club, but ultimately, I decided today was the day to take a crack at Chef Store. And boy, am I glad I did. U.S. Foods Chef Store is located at 970 Cipriana Drive in Myrtle Beach at the Nexus where both Route 17s converge. Now that's some Twilight Zone sort of stuff right there, I'll tell you. Okay, now listen carefully. Don't make the same mistake I do every time I go shopping. You'll be tempted to walk through unencumbered and just browse. Convicted, you won't necessarily commit to commerce. Don't do it. I always do, and I always regret it by the time I'm standing in line to check out straining my bulging biceps with boatloads of baggage. Just grab a cart. I know they look different. I know they're a little weird, but you'll get used to it. I promise. Now, when I come, I always walk to the right and review the products they have set up here, but it's really just a distraction for the pain that I am about to walk into. The first time we came, we didn't know we would be walking into a New Hampshire winter clad in our South Carolina summer clothing. New Hampshire! South Carolina, New Hampshire. South Carolina. Hampshire. <laughs> After nearly freezing our bits off in the walkthrough fridge, we wised up and brought sweaters next time. It's still pretty chilly if I'm being honest, but it's worth it because this is where we find the magic. This is where I get my giant bag of my favorite red bell peppers. This is where I found the biggest tub of hummus I've ever seen, ensuring my daughters and I can all dip our carrots and peppers to our heart's content without ever running out or bogarting too much from one another. And the best part is, it's the tastiest hummus I've ever tried to date, with a subtle blend of garlic and tahini, until I can locate some giant packages of chickpeas and begin blending my own hummus at home, this baby is absolute perfection. 
There's lots of other yummy sauces here too, like tzatziki sauce, cocktail sauce, and sour cream. Just like Arby's, they also have the meats here. And this is where Mama found her cheese at last. We always grab a giant bag of carrot sticks to crack into, and then it's back into normal temperatures where we can gaze at the frozen Philly steaks, hamburger patties, meatballs, jalapeno poppers, and fried pickles. The beauty is, whether you need them to feed hungry customers or hungry children, either way, they're going to taste delicious. And I love that I can get large sizes that will keep my crew fed for a while before I have to go back to the store. By now, I'm on a practically first name basis with the produce folks at my local market. In the dry goods section, you can find spices galore, milk, cocoa powder, broth, tortillas, and pasta. There's salad dressings, canned sauces, and loads of veggies. This giant pouch of tuna is big, even by our hungry standards, but I still kind of want to buy it. Coffee, tea, paper products, and food containers abound, and if you really want to be a chef, whether at home or in public, you can find all the tools of your trade here too. Cutters, slicers, dicers, and graters, strainers and drainers, mixers and separators, buckets, bowls, cups, scales, and bales. The real fun starts when you get home with your giant groceries. At least, that's where the fun starts for me. I cut up my giant loaf of mozzarella and started putting it through the paces. The first thing I wanted to do was make a giant mozzarella stick. Since I don't have a fryer or a pan big enough to fit, I baked it in the oven. Everything was going well until I decided I wanted the exterior a tad more crispy. Then it started melting outside the edges of the breadcrumb exterior. But that was okay with me because my nachos were ready to be topped with cheese, barbecue sauce, and pulled chicken, plus some sour cream just for good measure. Thank you, Lord, for this glorious food we're about to consume. Bless it to our bodies. Make us healthy and strong. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the food we're about to our bodies. Amen. God, thank you for this beautiful creation that Mommy has made. Bless it to our bodies. Keep us healthy and whole and strong. Thank you for my family. Thank you for this amazing, wonderful home that you are going to and Amen. God, thank you for the food. Bless it to our bodies. Thank you for this beautiful uh, snacks <laughs> to it's, make it's this it's better. Supper. And uh, thank you for my family, my life. Edison, Emma, me, mommy, amen. Now I know you're wondering, so I'll just tell you. The melt was fantastic. The stretchy, ooey gooeyness was on point. Man, that was a tasty dinner we will be revisiting soon. The cheese was ultimately a winner and fully worth the trip to chef's stores. Plus, I still have three quarters of that loaf left in my freezer. For those of you in the area, definitely have a lap through your chef's store and see what things call your name. Bring a sweater! If you're not in the area, check out their website because they've got locations all over the country and you just might get lucky. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay hungry and join me here next week for another episode to be uploaded forthwith. Sayonara, everyone.